we were discussing the important examples or you can say applications of euler lagrange equation in calculus of variations uh, now we are going to discuss a very important another problem uh, which is actually the most important application of euler lagrange equation in fact in this uh, second example we will discuss the minimum surface of a revolution actually you know a surface of revolution is formed on revolving a curve about a certain axis our aim in this regard is to find a curve which on revolving about a certain axis forms geometry of minimum surface area so this is our problem that we have to find a curve which when uh, revolve will form a geometry whose surface area will be minimum or the surface of revolution will be minimum this is our present problem in fact uh, here we have shown in this figure that there is a curve connecting the two end points let's see this figure x1 y1 and x2 y2 in fact one point is x1 by 1 and another point is x2 y2 and this is the curve which uh, connects these two points now this uh, curve is revolving around the y axis as i have shown in this figure and uh, uh, due to its revolution a figure uh, will be or a surface of revolution will be generated and uh, i have to show uh, or i have to find you better you say that uh, what will be this curve so that the surface of revolution generated by uh, this curve will be minimum so let us consider that uh, at this point a there is a small element of this curve joining the points x1 y1 and x2 y2 and this uh, elementary arc of the curve has a length let us say ds and when this ds uh, will be uh, revolved around the y axis then this uh, strip is created you can see this uh, strip here this uh, strip is uh, in fact produced due to the revolution of that uh, elementary arc of the curve so first uh, if uh, you say that x is the distance of that uh, arc from the y axis then you can find what will be the area Uh, generated by the revolution of this uh, elementary arc you can easily find so let us uh, write it uh, let us consider let us consider an elementary arc of length ds at a of the curve connecting the points x1 y1 and x2 y2 and due to due to a revolution of this arc a strip is generated as you can see in this figure now if we assume that the distance of this arc ds 
from the y axis is a and you can see this uh, i have assumed that this uh, ds is revolving around the y axis ds is revolving around or about y axis now let us consider if x be the distance of ds from y axis then surface area of the strip surface area of the strip which is actually the surface uh, generated due to a revolution of the strip what will be the surface area of this strip actually you can see this strip is just like uh, a ring here you can see and its radius is equal to x and its width is equal to ds <coughs> so in fact uh, when you will find the area uh, let us uh, see how we can visualize the area let us uh, consider that if we break this uh, strip here and elongated it then it will become a rectangle whose length will be equal to <coughs> 2 pi x and its breadth is ds so you can say that the area of this strip will be equal to 2 pi x times ds 2 pi x times ds now you know the elementary uh, length ds of uh, this uh, curve will be what this is in fact you have seen earlier this is simply a square root of dx square plus dy square this is actually ds ds is equal to this much you know now let us take this dx square as a common factor then you will get this is 2 pi x 1 plus dy by dx whole square times dx so this is the area generated by the revolution of the arc of length ds around y axis now uh, this dy by dx uh, can be written as y prime so this generated area may be uh, written as 2 pi x times 1 plus y prime square whole to the power half dx now this is just the area generated due to the revolution of ds around y axis so integrating this elementary area between the appropriate limit you can find what will be the total surface area generated due to revolution of the complete curve so so the total total surface area is what will be this if we denote this total area by the symbol i th this i have written the total surface area by i uh, for your convenience so then i will be what this will be integral 2 pi x times 1 plus y prime square whole to the power half dx and the limits of integration will be in fact uh, 
x1 y1 x2 y2 although integration is with respect to x so there will be only a need of uh, the limits of x and now let us say this is equation 1 now uh, you have seen earlier that the line integral of a functional f is defined in this way so if we say that i is equal to integral from x1 y1 to x2 y2 f of y y prime and x dx you know it now comparing these two equations 1 and 2 you can easily find what is the function uh, functional f so you can recognize this functional comparing these two equations so comparing one and two we see that this f of y y prime x is equal to what this will be in fact x times 1 plus y prime square whole to the power half you can easily compare it because 2 pi is a constant factor so uh, I have omitted this 2 pi factor if you will keep uh, it here uh, there will be no difference in your result but there is no need to take the factor 2 pi because it is constant so now uh, we will use the Euler Lagrange condition you know this integral i is minimum when actually Euler Lagrange equation gets satisfied so and I have to find the surface area generated when uh, when it is minimum so we will consider that i will be minimum uh, and what will be the condition for minimum i and you know you have already studied for the minimum value of i euler lagrange equation must be satisfied so you can say if if i will be minimum i will be minimum then the Euler Lagrange equation must be satisfied must be satisfied that is when you say Euler Lagrange equation must be satisfied and you know what is this uh, condition or what is Euler Lagrange equation you know you have already studied this is d dx del f by del y prime minus del f by del y equal to 0. Now substituting the value of f we will simplify this uh, equation. So substituting substituting for f we get you can see this is d dx and uh, del del y prime and what is f you can see here f is equal to x times 1 plus y prime square whole to the power half so let us put this at the place of f so this is x times uh, root over 
वन प्लस वाई प्राइम स्क्वायर एंड माइनस डेल डेल वाई डेल डेल वाई एफ एफ इज अगेन एक्स रूट ओवर वन प्लस वाई प्राइम स्क्वायर एंड दिस इक्वल टू जीरो नाउ यू कैन सी we are differentiating partially here with respect to y y dash so this x will be treated as constant and so your result will be d dx x and dc of this 1 plus y square whole to the power half will be what this is 1 over 2 and root over 1 plus y prime square times 2y prime and minus you can see the second term will be actually zero why as you can see here that the function which is to be uh, differentiated partially with respect to y is x times root over 1 plus y prime square so this function is not an explicit function of y and so this will be zero and so you can write this zero now this 2 and this 2 will cancel out and our result is what this is simply d dx d dx x y prime over root over 1 plus y prime square and this equal to 0 now uh, since derivative of x y prime over root over 1 plus y prime square is 0 so definitely this function will be constant in accordance with the rules of differentiation in calculus so you can say that this x y prime over root over 1 plus y prime square is equal to a and say a is a constant now you can simplify it for simplifying uh, let us square both sides of this equation and after squaring we will get x square y prime square is equal to a square times 1 plus y prime square and this will be simply a square plus a square y prime square now let us simplify it a little bit you can see if we will take this term a square y prime square in lhs then this y prime square will be a common factor and this will be x square minus a square and in rhs there is a square and so from here you can find what will be y prime y prime will be a over root over x square minus a square now you know y prime is what this is simply the derivative of y with respect to x so we will write in instead of this y prime dy by dx and this dy by dx is equal to a over root over x square minus a square and now from this equation you can easily find the Function y of x by simply integrating it. So, therefore, we can say integral of dy. This will be equal to a integral of dx over root over x square minus a square. Now you can see this integral will be what you can see. This is y equal to a cos hyperbolic inverse 
x by a plus another integration constant b you can see this b is integration constant this is your integration constant now from this uh, we will find expression for x in fact so you can see that uh, a cos hyperbolic inverse x over a will be equal to y minus b y minus b and this implies cos hyperbolic inverse x over a is equal to y minus b divided by a and so this x over a is equal to cos hyperbolic y minus b over a and therefore x is equal to a times cos hyperbolic y minus b over a so this is actually the equation of the curve whose revolution will generate the surface area of minimum surface area and uh, you know from the <coughs> geometry that this uh, equation is actually an equation of a quaternary so this is equation of a quaternary and so you can say that the surface of revolution is minimum when it is formed by a, a catenary so so the surface of revolution is minimum minimum when it is generated by generated by a generated by a catenary so you have seen how easily we can solve such types of problem by using the euler lagrange equation in fact all such problems are solved in the similar manner we have seen in this lecture this particular problem in forthcoming lecture we will see some of the important problems too